Hello, and welcome to Startups in Real Life. Um, today, we have a special episode of our Founder Spotlight series with Swati Agarwal, the CEO of Bear River. After our last episode, many people have asked Swati, how did you get to where you are so quickly? What tips can you give? And this is one of the favorite types of um, episodes I like, is really digging in to um, a founder's journey. So we decided to create this special episode to share hers. Um, one of the people I admire most in leadership, Ryan Rose Lansky, says it well in his intro to the podcast he started last year, The Path. Um, he says, most career paths aren't linear and there is no one formula for success. But still, one of the most common questions asked is, what is your path to success? So we're gonna walk through that today. You ready to do it, Swati? Let's roll. All right, let's do it. Um, I'd like to start with asking you two things um, that I hope will kind of frame the whole conversation. Um, so the first one, I'm going to ask them both and then you can kind of go into them, is what is your mantra? And then explain it. And then what is your motto? So if you could take it from here, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, you know, I I try to believe in, th in my three Fs and hold true to them every day. That's being fierce, fearless, and flawed. Hmm. And what that means for me is that, you know, I have to define my own path and I can't let anybody tell me what I can or cannot do. Mm -hmm. Also taking risks, right? Uh, risks are hard, but it's always or often that bold decision yield good results. Amazing results for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. And accepting that failure is a part of your journey. That a lot of times the risk we take, we will succeed and few times we'll fail. Right. And failures, as hard as failures are, we often learn so much from them. And it's our response to the failures. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know, I've, I've found that, but I'm sorry, keep going. No, but that's so true. What you're saying is right that that's so important. What we do after the failure defines where we go ourselves and where the company will go. We have to take time to analyze why we failed and what failed and move forward with more force. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, what about an external motto? Like what do you use outside? Because that sounds like an internal kind of way that you navigate, you know, who you are. Right. Um, talk to me about kind of your, your external version. Um, my external versions is, you know, that I'm deep rooted for feedback. Like as a company, both me and the company, we are so deep rooted with feed, constructive feedback, whether it's from the customers, whether it's internally. But what I had to learn really deeply is that it's constructive feedback. I cannot let criticism defer me from my path, right? Mm -hmm. And something that has deeply resonated with me, what uh, Brené Brown says is that if you're not in the arena getting your ass kicked on occasion, I'm not interested in your feedback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, when I had first heard it a couple of years back, you know, it's something so simple, but you have to really really stop and think about it, right? That who will, what feedback you will take and not take. There are so many people in life that will sit in the back seat and pass judgment on you and what you're doing, right? But never be brave enough to put their lives online or do the hard work you are doing. Right. And you right. have to make a conscious choice that whether you're going to take that feedback or not. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the piece of part of what I believe in, which is, you know, knowing yourself in the Socratic sense and being able to really be able to hear people not react, know what's any anything you might project out or get defensive about versus, OK, that was good feedback. I'm going to take it in and I'm going to I'm going to learn from it. Um, yeah. But fierce, fearless and flawed. I, I think that's um, I haven't heard that before, and I really, I really like that. Um, so thank you for sharing thank that. You. 
Um, and deep rooted for feedback. That's that's also you know as far as outside. Do you do you use that inside the company? Like when you guys when you're talking with your team and maybe people are getting a little frustrated or anything. Is there ever time you kind of just put that out there or how how do you use it? Uh, you know, uh, we do use it internally a lot, and I do talk about it in all of our meetings because, as I've said, you know. We are a bunch of very passionate, very opinionated people, and we are not scared to challenge each other, question each other, mm -hmm. right? And to welcome that atmosphere and say that, you know, we can, we need to say what we think. We need to all have opinions, but we also need to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I'm always hearing what people are saying, um, taking time to connect to that. But what we take in as a company and move forward and what we not, what mm -hmm. we don't. So, yeah, that's right. Um, okay, now let's go back to the beginning. So okay. you started as a business analyst um, for the first half of your career, really, from what I can see. Um, and, you know, why did you pick that path? And how do you believe that set you up for the success in your future roles as both a CRO and a, ultimately a CEO? Okay. So, you know, I want to first say that I did choose to be a business analyst, um, but the path forward through that, like project management, product management, uh, account manager, CRO, and CEO, I did not define that path. And I did not think this is where I was going. I think it, uh, it grew organically, and I kept taking more and more opportunities as they came my way and kept learning through them. Um, and, you know, a lot of people around me tell me a lot of times that you manifested this because, like, I used to talk mm -hmm. about being a CEO 20 years ago. And, you know, I've, I've been reflecting that a lot in the last couple of years, right, that I did, I did want to be a CEO and I did want to be an entrepreneur running my own company. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I did not know that this is the path I'm going to take or this is what's going to define my path here. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we first moved to States, um, you know, I was looking for opportunities. My background was in tech and I wanted to stay in tech, but I was also wanting to work closely with the customers. So when the opportunity presented to be a business analyst, that sounded really exciting, right? And it was it was a very exciting time uh, and a role for me because I got to work very closely with the customers, really understood what it takes to understand what the customer needs are and how do we turn it into wants and then develop a product around it. Yeah. Right? And continue that product uh, process in and out. And I think that just the whole idea of creating a product uh, by taking customers' voice and feedback was a really valuable les lesson that I learned. Yeah, yeah. Um, as um, I've mentioned to you, you know, I also started as an analyst and business analyst. Um, and I, for me, I think it was similar. And also, it, it was like knowing that what I was creating in a product had to then be accepted by those mm -hmm. people who at that at the point in my career, there was a lot of layoffs. There was a lot of downsizing happening and people were afraid by the automating processes, making them more efficient. Um, so learning the trust, which I'm sure is also part of what you did. It's like learning to get people teaching, allowing people to trust you so that when that product was done, you could implement it and make it this successful rollout was also a skill. I think that, you know, yeah. you kind of talked about, um, with you know a people skill um, that's that's kind of required um, along with listening and and kind of documenting. Um, what was the moment in your career when you had? What was there a moment in your career when you had to pause and make a tough decision about your path? So a fork in the road, A B. Um, if you could share a little bit about that, and most importantly, the process you used um, to help you make the decision of which direction to go. You know, I can think of several examples, but the one I want to talk about is when I became an account manager. And I, f I want to talk about that because I really feel that that was a, such a crucial step in my career. 
And I was totally out of my comfort zone. I knew nothing about the role or what it required. And there was nobody to teach me around uh, or define what the role was, right? And nobody else to backfill my role of a project manager, product manager and business analyst that three roles I was doing before. But I made a conscious decision to take, take on that role of an account manager. And I did not have a lot of time to learn uh, or just take time to learn and understand what it takes to be an account manager. And as I said, I was so uncomfortable. It was so hard. Mm -hmm. And some of some of my best growth happened at that point of time, wherein I sat with my uncomfortableness. I worked so incredibly hard, be, be day and night, weekends. I took time to understand each and every customer. I went an extra mile to build that trust with them. That is just, I think that was incredible. Mm-hmm. both for me and to build those relationships with the customers and understand that, you know, it is so important. And uh, also just for my own growth that to do, to be uncomfortable and still keep moving forward and learn and try to be good at the job. So what did you pull from inside yourself? Because that was scary, right? It was this yeah. unknown. There wasn't a mentor there, it sounds like. You know, like every, but everything was kind of on you. So going back, you know, to your life, what what was it? And this is going to lead into my next question of mentors and and kind of the people that we, we, we lean on. Um, what did you use to kind of make the decision and then feel really confident about it once you made that? Um. So I would say that I definitely had a good support system, Mm -hmm. right? I am incredibly grateful to be where I am and be surrounded by the people I am. And I did have, I did have support from the people inside. Like I would say that my husband definitely, and he sees the best worst and the crazy in me, but to be able to give me that space where I was working day in and out and weekends, right? It's a lot. And he supported me through that. He said, if you want to try it and you want to take it on, you should take it on. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, endless chats with my brother, my dad saying that, you know, you, as you grow older, your risk taking ability and your ability to learn diminishes if you don't practice it. Mm-hmm. Right. And some of some of the some of the times in life you have to do the hard work and you have to take the job that no one else wants to and thrive at it to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I have to say that at the time, uh, Randy was our CEO and Tony was our president. Um, When I when I started doing the job, they never said no. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of it, that. Nobody ever stopped me to do the work that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. They didn't ask me to do it, but they did not stop me, right? So Mm -hmm. it's also an incredible gift that people will trust you to do the job. You don't have any training. You're not trained for it. You've never done the job. But second day, you are in front of your biggest customers, (laughs) right? So having that... Uh, confidence, I think, helps, Mm -hmm. right? And while we were going through the process, um, we had hired a consultant. And I think the best thing that he he told me was, you're going to do your best work when you're uncomfortable because you're going to work so hard. And and the worst, what will happen is you'll fail, right? But you'll Mm -hmm. learn in the process and move forward. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this, again, touches on, uh, in your previous episode, you shared how your father and your uncles um, were role models for you. And you've, you've kind of talked about that even now and your brother. Um, please share with me how um, having them as mentors early in your life helped you navigate your career now. And do you seek out mentors still? And how, how do you utilize kind of that, that support structure? So having an incredible support structure that I have, it's definitely, uh, it's de- definitely helped me being that driven 
taking on the challenges and just believing that, you know, I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Right. There's, and I think that's really who I am. I have, I can't just prep and go into something and keep learning. I think when I am in the situation, I'll do everything I can to learn, to figure out what it takes. Right. And I'll work hard, but I am in the situation and I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I think it is, it is the opportunities that have been given to me my, by my father, by my brother, by, uh, by my uh, husband and incredible friends and family that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and in terms of seeking mentors now, I think I'm always seeking people. Um, I have to say that different points of uh, time in my life, a lot of people have helped me like, uh, Benny Brown, I think her books her uh, have helped me so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I I read Indra Nuri's book by the time when I was taking on the CRO role. And she talked about so much of challenges coming from an Indian background and how it is different, right? And how, and something that deeply touched me was that she talks about that, you know, we come from a culture where we show so much of respect for our elders and we, but that can also make us sit in our corner because we don't want to be rude. We don't want to ask for what we want, Mm -hmm. right? And nobody will come and hand you or anything in a server plate. You can do a great job, but you also have to ask for what you want, Mm -hmm. right? So yeah, and Priyanka Chopra, she talks about so much about the hardships and the failures and how to navigate forward. Mm-hmm. I think that normalized a lot of what I was going through and it helped me move forward. Yeah. Yeah, I think it sounds a lot like as I hear your story, it's it's the foundation of being given kind of the support to believe in yourself so that you could have the confidence to to go in and step into the unknown. Um, seems like a big piece of your path, of your story. Um, Okay, let's get back to the career path itself. So before you became the company CEO, you were the CRO. Mm -hmm. Um, What are some of the most important strategies you implemented in that role that helped uh, you set you up for your future role as the CEO? You know, uh, when I was a CRO, one year into that role, the company was more profitable than it had been in the ten in the past ten years, and it's so incredible to think about, right? We did not change a lot of things, but we 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 took time to actually understand what is the value of a product, what are we delivering to our customers, and what impact it's having on their operations. <clears throat> I had such hard conversations internally and with our customers about our product and about the product services and the values we are delivering. And I, and I strongly believe those hard conversations that I had mm-hmm. really shaped the company and my growth mm-hmm. and built incredible trust and a trusting relationship with the customers, mm. right? They're not only stuck with us through this change, the change of management, the change of branding, the change of pricing, mm-hmm. but we had a more trusting relationship than ever. They saw the value that we are bringing. We worked closely with them to deliver what they want. And I think it became a true partnership. Mm-hmm. Nice. And and what do you, from what you learned when you were a CRO, what what are you handing on now to your sales team from that learning? Like what 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 are like a couple of key messages that that you're giving to your your team now? So I think what what was important for me, you know, coming from a tech world, where I started my career as a developer. Mm-hmm. I've done I did development, I did business analyst, I did project management, product management. Right, we get into this tech tech mindset. Mm-hmm. And sales looks scary or it looks like, oh, I don't want to be a salesperson, right? Because you're not doing the tech, you're not doing the main job, you're doing sales, right? What I have learned in two years doing sales is that, you know, it is, 
you can still hold a lot of integrity and trust mm -hmm. and still be a good salesperson. You, it's, it's a lot of part of sales is listening, right? And understanding and uh, listening to the challenges, right? And understanding how can, how can a product help fill that or not, right? And just focusing on that. So what, what we talk about in, internally with our sales team um, right now is that we, we are not going and selling just uh, anything and everything, right? We are, we are showing customers the value we can deliver with our product and services mm -hmm. and analyzing if they need that. And if we can find those customers, you know, it's a true relationship and mm -hmm. where we it's a mutually ban beneficial relationship and we know we'll do a great job mm -hmm. there. So it's worth fighting for. It's worth sticking for. It's worth working for. Yeah. So it's your, your, yeah. So it sounds like the messaging is around relationships and trust and listening. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Neat. Um, what are some of the significant challenges you faced internally and externally when transitioning from that role of a CRO to um, the CEO at Bear River? You know, it was a much bigger transition than I was prepared for and I had thought. Mm -hmm. um, even through through business analyst to CRO, I was still responsible for a part of part of it, my job, right? Mm -hmm. I was uh, I continued looking at the company through the lens of my job, right? And tried to excel in that. Mm -hmm. But when I became the CEO, I realized that I'm now I have a 360 view of the company. Mm -hmm. It's not, no longer about just excelling at one job. It's about making sure that every gear of the company is churned, right? What do we need to do in every part of it? So you start questioning, you start analyzing, you start viewing it from a different lens. And it's a much bigger transition internally and externally, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there are people who are working with you past... 10, 12 years who are used to seeing you in a single job. And now you're sitting and analyzing what work we are doing. And you know that uh, you you have you have a vision and I have a vision and a path to carve out to, which means that I'm going to have to churn all the gears into action, mm -hmm. right? So these are, these, it's incredibly hard to, um, look at it from that lens and also try to churn it and change it and bring change in every part of the company and still propel forward. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I yeah. think I'm still learning and growing. Yeah. That. I mean, we probably always will be right. right. Um, which is good. Um, what helped you through the transition? If you could share some of the tools and resources, um, so that others can understand and consider them for their growth as well. That would be great. <clears throat> you know, what helped me is balancing ambition versus humility and kindness, right? For me, it feels like I'm playing Jenga all the time, <laughs> right? that I'm trying to balance everything, but because I am driven and it's my tendency to go at everything with full force right when i see anything and i i just want to do it and i want to do it all and move forward mm -hmm. but it's i'm realizing how important it is to balance balance it uh it, to balance it and take time to pause and connect with customers right it and also people internally with people to stop and listen and analyze their views and incorporate that as well in my journey, right? Mm -hmm. To stay grounded through all of this, right? There's so much growth that happens for the company and for me personally through all this that I, I move forward, but also stay grounded to my roots, to where I come from and the values that I've learned along the way. Mm -hmm. I also try to always remember that I come from a very small town in India, right? And uh, there are so many people who work so hard and are extremely talented, but don't get to do what I get to do 
day. So I, I try to remember that. I try to practice gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what I'm learning today, and I don't do it really well, but I'm learning, is just taking time out, clocking out. Mm -hmm. right? I love working. Love has, uh, like, work has always been my love. I just, I, I, this is the place I go to. And I can totally immerse, immerse myself in work and continue working day in and night. But, and it worked, it worked till I, in my 30s, mm -hmm. I will say. But now in my 40s, I'm realizing it doesn't work as much. That, you know, it, uh, it felt so good and uh, the culture I come from, it is such an important part to work so hard and get mm -hmm. great results that it's like I'm on an adrenaline rush all the time, right? I do this and it works great and I want to do more, right? But I'm, I'm really learning that it's, I need to disconnect. And it's not, it's not a sprint. Mm -hmm that I can just run run through it and be done with it. It's a marathon, it's a long running marathon and I need to show up every single day. So what ch what changed both internally and externally to make you realize that? I mean, was it just your age? Cause you're mentioning your thirties, forties. Yeah. Was there some, anything, you know, other things going on just to give, you know, people some context? So I think there are a lot of things going on, right? That I think I am, um, at uh, one, being the CEO, you need to show up every single day, be, uh, being your best, looking your best, and I'm interacting with customers day in and out, mm -hmm. right? I do not have the time that I was working till three o'clock in the night. I can still show up seven o'clock in the morning and be my very best. I can't mm -hmm. pull it off. Mm -hmm. I need that time to rest, right? More than working hard, it was time to take time to rest to be able to show up seven o'clock in the morning and be my best. Second, that I need time. I need time for my daughter. I need time for my husband. I need time for my family and friends. And they're so important, right? There was a period of my time where I just focused on my work and propelling forward, but I realized that it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. And I need, I need that time to, uh, to fulfill myself with by connecting with my uh my people around mm -hmm. yeah. nice okay thank you um okay we're gonna start to wrap it up but it one of the things that i like to ask people is if you could go back and give your business analyst self your your younger self um one piece of advice what would it be i would I would say I'll had a hard time to say one piece of advice, but I'll I'll give you a few. Okay. You know, I I want to go back and say that I want to tell myself that this is just a chapter of your life and not the whole book. So take it easy. Mm -hmm. Breathe. You don't have to work so hard. You can take time to relax. Um I also want to say that I have learned it today and I'm still working at it but do not seek external validation all the time. It's nice when people tell you you're doing a good job and you're doing good, but it's more about believing in yourself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, keep working at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, any other insights or reflections um, or personal goals? Anything I haven't asked that you'd like to share? Um, I'll share, I'll share what I'm thinking about my personal goal as well as what's the goal for Bear River because lots of people ask me that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I was thinking about what is my goal? You know, I've talked about that. I, that I've really never defined my path. I've just taken on the opportunities as they come and just mm -hmm. jump into them. So, and I, I've heard and read this that really resonates with me deeply that uh, the goal of life is not uh, is not uh, is not to reach to the grave safely in a well-preserved body but rather slid and slide thoroughly wound up totally worn out shouting 
<laughs> that was a hell of a ride. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that one. I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really liked it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, okay. Uh, my, uh, one of my last questions, what is, what is the definition of bliss for you? It's, uh, it's being on a beach with my daughter and husband in Goa specifically. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and finally, what, what is, is there all of these things that you're learning and have learned, um, is there anything specific about Bear River that you want to kind of share as, as a, a final thought um, and how you're incorporating that in? So, you know, when I think about Bear River, Bear Tracks and where we are going, mm -hmm. um, I'm often reminded by the last two years that I had that, you know, that whatever comes our way, we will power through it, we'll push through it, we'll push through the setbacks and do more. And I think the way, the goal for us is to serve our customers incredibly well through our product and services and just be excellent in that. Beyond that, I do not want to define a glass ceiling for myself or for the company. Mm -hmm. I think we want to just continue moving forward and see where it takes us. Nice. Okay. Well, um, thank you so much for this. This was great for taking on this as, um, kind of special episode. Um, I look forward to seeing you next week. We're going to be talking um, with you and a couple of your people um, and hearing more about the customer and the customer point of view. So we appreciate it and um, have a great week and we'll talk soon. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It was a great chatting with you.